Good day ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the Success Talks with Coach T Mungate, a show designed to inspire and motivate you with real life stories of those people that have made it in life and also to equip and to empower you with the different tools that one needs to achieve success in different areas of life. And my name is Coach Tenai Mungate and I'm going to be your host for this particular edition. Um, with me on the show today is, um, um, is an Afro jazz musician and a producer. Um, he is also known as a bass guitar prodigy. Yeah, interesting. And um, he has toured around the world um, playing with different artists. Um, he's, uh, ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Mr. Josh Mack to the show. Mr. Josh Mack, welcome to the show. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's an honor to have you on the show. And um, yeah, it's an honor to actually have this conversation with you, this talk, and um, just having um, to draw some lessons. From, from your story. So Mr. Mac, um, there are some viewers who are maybe tuning in and they don't know who you are. Please do just introduce yourself to, to the guests who are watching. All right, um, first of all, I would like to say I'm humbled mm -hmm. uh, to have been awarded this great opportunity to be here on this prestigious show. Um, my name is Josh Mac and I'm a bass player slash producer, vocalist, guitarist, um, music teacher. I do a lot of things. Everything that I do is all music. Um, I'm a jazz artist um, oriented at uh, Prince Edward School. Uh, I was in the jazz band. Um, and then from there, I was a session musician for quite a number of bands. I think I almost played with almost everyone at that time. <laughs> yeah. well, allow me to just come in there and, 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 and um, I just wanted to ask because you already you were already un unpacking how, how your journey started mm -hmm. but uh, um, please do take us through how you, 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 you your journey started and up until where, where you are now today yeah, maybe just take us through this, that journey. Okay uh, so when I was six years old I picked up my dad's guitar he had quite many guitars at home. So I picked up the acoustic guitar and I started teaching myself, okay. you know. But because I was six years old, my fingers were little, so I couldn't play chords. So all I did was to play the bass notes and I I am left-handed. I used the left hand to write. So when I picked up the guitar, automatically I had to face it on the opposite direction, you know. So, because right-handed people, how do they hold it? This way. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I took a hold of it this way. So the bass strings were lower. So that's how I started to learn the bass. That's how I concentrated on the bass because I was using only the bass strings on an acoustic guitar. So from then I taught myself and then by the age of eight, around eight, nine, I was already playing in church. You know, my father was surprised to see me playing in church because um, when I picked up the guitar, he, when I used to steal his guitar at home to practice on my own, he didn't know that I was playing his guitar. So he was surprised one day in church when we were playing with the, the Sunday school, you know. And from then, because it's a long story, so I'll just cut it short. Um, so from church, uh, let's skip to the time when I was Form 2, Form 1. That's when I started to session, we moved to Gweru. You know, we're staying in a place called Ascot. So that's when we, I started session to session as to play as a session artist for gospel artists. There was a band which was called Aim High. So Aim High, um, we did uh, the Crossroads competition and we won the Guero edition and we came to Arari. And we did the Arari competitions. We came up number two, but I was the bass bass player for the for the event. <laughs> so they gave me some strings and a T-shirt, which I still have right now hanging in my in my room. So from then, when I came to Arare, um, I was so lucky enough that Pastor G attended that Crossroads event, and Prince Mafuki was there as well. So when they saw me playing, they were like, "Hey." Where do you stay? I stay in Guru. They said, you should come to Arare. So I moved back to Arare. My brother was staying in Arare, and I came to stay with my brother. His name is Daniel. Um, 
then from then i started to work with pastor g prince mafukizi those were the two artists that i started working with then more artists started to come in ccap voice of mbari you know uh shingisai suluma mostly gospel yeah. so from then um i then got a scholarship at prince edward to do my lower six and upper six and that scholarship was a music scholarship i was supposed to be in the jazz band but i didn't know anything about jazz because i was gospel oriented oh. so i started to learn jazz at prince edward they had a library which had so many vinyls and cassettes uh, jazz cassettes jazz vinyls so i used to spend so much time in the library and then whatever i i heard in the library i would take it back into the practice room and try to learn it that's how i then fell in love with jazz which was a bit I think jazz is hypnotic it gets you <laughs> as it really got me and I had to shut my mind to everything else I concentrated on jazz uh that's how I became a jazz artist so from Prince Edward I then started working with bands like Color Blue to Dumanenga then after I finished school I joined Africa Revenge for 5 years and after that Victor Kunonga and after Victor I decided okay it's enough i need to do my own thing <laughs> okay all right all right ah that's ah, that's that, that, that's amazing and um that's that's a very interesting story you know moving from one stage and, and to the next and moving to the to the other stage and um now um i'm sure this journey um that you have narrated to us and you've told us it had some challenges it had mm. some turbulent times mm. um please do share with us some of the challenges you faced and how maybe you you maneuver through them Okay um probably I'll start when I was form 1 um the what happened was that my my dad uh and my mom separated that's why we moved to Gweru so when we got the things were hard okay financially for my mom so I had to do a lot of session work to also try and cover expenses at home so that kind of like taught me to be responsible at a very young age and to know how to handle money and to know how to look for money and to know how to be professional because you know I was only form 1 and you are hired to perform to play for for different bands you have to be professional about it you have to be early you have to be to respect the artist to know that the artist is the leader and you do not play whatever you feel like playing you play what is needed in the music so i I learned that quite a long time ago which is something that I don't see in today's session musicians honestly <laughs> so yeah um and then moving on to that I when I moved to Harare you know it, it was a new environment for me and adjusting to working with the bands that we were working with um it was a bit difficult because Yeah, is too fast. <laughs> you know, uh the way people used to you know relate to each other it's, it's it was quite different. But I I had to adjust uh very fast to fit in the system and it worked out for me. But um there are, there's a whole host of other challenges that I met when I became a solo artist that is a book to be written on its own <laughs> okay I, yeah. i think that actually takes me to my to my next question mm. um i think you making the decision of going solo well, mm. wasn't even easy for you um and i think to date now you've got three albums to your name if i'm not mistaken there are actually five now five now <laughs> 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 All right, yes, yes. Uh, so you now have five albums to your name. Mm-hmm. So now I think it would be good even for the viewers to know about um what inspired that journey and what really drove you to make that decision and up until to where you are now as as an in as a solo artist. Okay. Well, um when I was working as a session artist, I used to write music, but I couldn't sing. You know, I just used to write instrumental music. So I thought, "Hey, you know what? Let me branch off um and try to do something on the side but then i thought it was that easy you know when i faced the first challenges that's when i realized okay it's either i do solo or i <laughs> i quit <laughs> I, i i stay as a session artist so we i i kind of like 
uh, then it was very hard because then it's 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 a it's a move of uncertainty. You're not sure if you're going to succeed or not. So it took a lot of courage and a lot of self belief to stand on my own because I remember the first days when I went to the old book cafe at um, at uh, Five Avenue. I used to perform for two people, three people in the crowd, and you have a band of six people that you need to pay, you know. So I then realized that, hey, you know what, I cannot drop this, this session gig um, just like that. So I used to do the session for artists like Chuoni, so Maraire, if I go on tour, then I raise enough money to put on the side so that when I do my own thing, I can even pay my musicians from my own pocket, even if we don't make money, so that I build the brand and also I get the experience to be on in the front because it's, it's not it's a whole different ball game when you are now in the front and your name is the one on the project, you know. So that was kind of like um, um, a how can I say a challenging part for me because you are handling a lot of things. You are handling the day-to-day -day running of the band. Usually before as a session musician, you just go and play and then you wait for the manager to call you to give you your money. But now you're doing everything on your own. You're doing the composing. You have to know what to compose, what people want to hear. You have to be, try and find your footing. What is your brand all about? And for me, to be honest, the first album did not do justice for me in terms of branding because I was all over the place. You know, but the funny thing is that that album is, for, <laughs> is, is, is one of the favorite albums that people really love. But they they have certain songs that they love of that album. But I was all over the place. All right, and um, well, maybe what in, what inspired maybe those those albums? Maybe. All right. Uh, so, I from the beginning I write about as uh, a social day to day living of a Zimbabwean because I grew up in Zimbabwe and I live in Zimbabwe, so I write about Zimbabwe, you know. So usually when I write songs, I'm inspired by things that are happening in my day to day life. What I hear people talking about, what I see happening on the streets, is what I take and I put it on song, and also I try to teach. Uh, people uh, through my music, you know, teach about life lessons, life values, stuff like that. That's what I write about. Uh, but also, you know, sometimes as an artist, you get inspiration whereby you just looking for what the market wants. <laughs> you know, so you, sometimes you write a song just about what the market wants. You know, you, what do people, what are people interested in these days what 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 is the thing that is really what is the in thing chukuri than the chief and then you write about that yeah as well uh, amazing and um i think it's uh, from what you are, you are saying there um there are some a lot of lessons that we can we can we can take from from that you know stepping out of your comfort zone is, it's, it's not an easy decision to make you know going solo and things like that and i'm sure uh, our viewers are actually learning from from that um and and and, and yes um so viewers are uh, we're going to take a short break and um stay tuned and remember to keep liking sharing and commenting do it again, right. do it Thank again. You <laughs> Okay, so viewers, we are going to be taking a short break. Uh, remember to keep liking and sharing on this particular podcast.
Um, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm sure you are liking and sharing on this particular broadcast. And uh, today I'm in studio with, with uh, Mr. Josh Mack, and before the, the break he was talking about his albums. Uh, but now, um, Mr. Mack would like to know more about you and the things that uh shape you and that mold you into the person that you are and um this is a question that i, o I always and i always ask um our, our guests each and every one of our guests what would be the five principles you would say have shaped you and have molded you into the person that you are today okay uh first of all i was raised as a christian uh my parents had a very strong christian background and um for me, I just didn't take it up because my parents were Christians, but it's actually my self-belief uh, to be a Christian. Uh, but I can say the, the, the very first principle is determination. You know, without determination, there is nothing you can achieve because everything that we're trying to do here, our hustle, uh, it requires a lot of um, determination and perseverance, you know, um, and self the second one I would say is self-belief. You've got to believe in yourself first before you, you try to make other people believe in you. You know, can you really do it? Yes, I can do it. This is me. And number three, I think uniqueness. One has to be very unique in every business. For instance, I'll give you an example. You, uh, you take brands, different brands like uh, beverage brands. We have so many of them. And they all taste different. And we know most of them, maybe they copied from someone else. But if you copy someone else and you're not unique, you become a, 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 a second option. Ex ex exactly. So yeah, I think uniqueness plays, played a very uh, important role in my career. I tried as much as, much as I got inspiration uh, from other artists, because that's the difficult thing with music. You get inspiration from other artists, but you have to be unique in your own way and for me i'm african so i sing african music you know and i fuse it up with other elements especially the jazz elements but the root of it is african yeah and then number four we were number three right mm, number yes. Three, yes yeah number four is you've got to love what you do <laughs> you cannot <laughs> do anything without loving what you're doing for me it really worked because uh, music is something that people enjoy, and I enjoy it too. So that also worked very well in terms of my practice routines. Because if I'm trying to figure out something and I can't get it, because I have love for what I do, I keep doing it until I get it right, you know. So and number five would be consistency. Yeah, you cannot you cannot do things and stop and then restart again you know it doesn't work that way you've got to be consistent even whenever you hit a brick wall you've got to find other ways i think that's a very important aspect in every business for me uh i started be uh, being a professional musician as a session artist when i was f form one and until now i think that says <laughs> that says a lot about consistency yeah, <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure um, to our viewers, I think we are learning a lot from these principles, you know, consistency. You know, we are products of the things that we consistently do, you know, so we are defined, you know, in fact, by what we do. So, uh, Mr. Mac, um, thank you for sharing those five powerful principles. Yes, um, moving on. Mm -hmm. um, you, you mentioned, you know, as, 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 as we were starting this interview that you, you went through you are a person who practiced a lot, you know. Um, yes, and, and I'm sure that was part of um, preparation. That was also preparing you for the person you are becoming, mm -hmm. you know. And I'm going to use a quote for asking, mm -hmm. for asking this particular question that I'm asking. Mm -hmm. um, it, it says that success only occurs when your preparation processes are enough to meet up with the opportunity. Mm -hmm. And for you to be the successful person that you are, mm -hmm. you, you know, you have gone through a lot of preparation, be it rehearsals and, and a lot of things, you know. Mm -hmm. um, what is the importance of preparing yourself for an opportunity? Um, and also, um, what, 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 what would you say are some of the opportunities maybe that you might have missed, um, that you felt like, you know what, um, if I had prepared more, I could have got this opportunity? Okay. Uh, I'm going to answer that one 
<laughs> in a more esoteric way. Okay. Okay. So I'm, I, I'm sure you know about the power of attraction. So for me, preparation is the power of attraction. Sometimes I used to prepare for something that I didn't even know would happen. When I'm, uh, when I'm practicing personally in my house, I'm preparing for something that I don't even know how it's going to happen, you know. So if you prepare, okay, I'll give you, I'll give you this example. Sometimes people in my house thought I, I, would, I was going crazy, whereby I would take my bass guitar and stand in front of the mirror <laughs> and start playing and singing as if I'm seeing a whole large stadium full of people, you know. For me, that is more of preparation, but at the same time, you're attracting that success, you know. And for some reason, I don't know what kind of physics works but it works, it works yeah. you know because you start to see opportunities coming up mm -hmm. but now the tricky thing is that when an opportunity comes up because there are opportunities that will come mm -hmm. and you're not prepared you know in all aspects for instance as a musician as a solo artist there's an opportunity that is coming and you're used to play with it to playing with a band a backup band and they require you to play a solo a solo act. How are you going to do it if you're not prepared? So as an artist, you have to be prepared. You have to know your industry. You have to know your market. If you have a niche market, you have to know what kind of, uh, of demands are in that market and you've got to prepare for them. And as a musician, all you need to do is to prepare in the rehearsal. Now, the lucky thing about musicians <laughs> is, what, is that what you prepare is what you're going to play. Uh, different to soccer players. <laughs> because you don't, you never know how your opponent is gonna attack you, you know. But as a musician, exactly what you prepare in your practice room is exactly how you're gonna perform, and it's gonna be enhanced by the response from the crowd. So I think, uh, for me, preparation is more es esoteric. It's a power of attraction in play, and at the same time, you are equipping yourself with with abilities that you didn't have before, that you want to have, that you are going to be uh, presenting to a crowd. Yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. And it actually reminded me of, 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 of this certain law, and it's called the, the law of attraction, mm. you know, which, which states that um, the things that are happening in our lives right now, we have attracted them through three things, you know, our thoughts, our feelings or beliefs and our actions, you know, so it actually reminded me of that. Um, and moving on, Mr. Mac, um, <laughs> this is a very <laughs> serious, uh, interesting question. Right. Do musicians read or are you, are you readers? <laughs> I don't read at all. <laughs> no, man. I would rather, I would rather learn from video. Oh, all right. Hey, because I think it's, 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 it's a gift that we are not even given, mm -hmm. though I try to, because when you need information, mm -hmm. sometimes you really need to read. But I can't say I'm a reader who sits down and reads and <laughs> reads and reads. So what I do is I look for videos. If I need to learn something, I, I'll, I'll, I love to learn through visuals. So you have platforms like YouTube, so that's where I go and I read. Even back at school, hey man, I never used to love reading. No. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Mm, okay. Um. But 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 maybe just just for 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 the viewers, maybe they, they would want to be interested. Maybe one one or two books that you would recommend um people to read that maybe you you might have read accidentally. Actually, yeah. All right. The uh, I read this book. It's called The Secret. That is actually. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's it I talks about it. that is one of the books that i read from start to finish mm -hmm. you know because it's quite interesting how they wrote it mm -hmm. you know it makes you want to keep reading mm -hmm. you know then what else have i read <laughs> i don't think there's anything else right. that i've read <laughs> except the book uh, the bible okay the bible of course book, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. that that's a great book uh, that's a great book indeed um the, the secret idea yeah, that's a that's a good book you know i love yeah. it personally and i I think I always take time to read it, and I would recommend our viewers to, to look for that book and the Bible as well. It's, it's the most important one. Yes. All right. Um, Mr. Mick, it has been amazing having you on the show, um, learning from your journey and learning from the, 
from your experiences, you know, and uh, um, as we conclude the show, what would be your last words of advice to our viewers? And I think we, we also you also need to to mention how we can get your music you know, okay. to those that are interested. Yes. All right. Okay. Um, I think music is a business like any other business, and the principles that we use in the music business they also work in any other business. So I think. Um, I would like to say uh, one just has to believe in themselves and never to give up. You, can, you cannot give up. When you put your mind to do something, you've got to make it work even if it takes years. You know, today we have got globes. The person who made a globe made a thousand attempts before he got it right. Yeah. You know? So we, we, you got to persist um, and also believe in yourself and believe in God you know your maker because he knows what you need and he knows your purpose in life so you've got to have some sort of faith as well um as for my music um it's available online on all platforms spotify uh, itunes apple music all you have to do is search for josh mac now a lot of people ask me uh is it josh mackey <laughs> no it's not josh mackey <laughs> It's Josh Mack, which is M-E-C-K, yeah, uh, M-E-C-K, that's uh, the, the spelling for my surname, so you just search for Josh Mack and you get all my music online. All right, ah, all right, uh, ladies and gentlemen, there you have it, um, this was Josh Mack, and please do follow him uh, on all his social media platforms, and please do buy his music, you know, I, I have personally listened to some of his music, and yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing, very unique, and, and you enjoy it, trust me. Yes, uh, but thank you very much for tuning in to the show today. Um, and remember to follow us on Success Talks with Coach Team Mungate on all platforms. And remember to subscribe, you know, um, to on this particular channel, Dreams TV. Yes, and also like their Facebook page. Um, from me and the Dreams TV crew behind the scenes, yeah, it's a wrap. <laughs>